This video is on calorimetry. So our aims for this video are first to be able to calculate enthalpy changes from experimental data and to suggest why enthalpy changes may be inaccurate. So the, um, the um, numbers you get from the experimental data, why that may not be the most accurate. So first we need to understand what enthalpy change means. So enthalpy change is the heat, sorry, the heat energy change at constant pressure. And what you've got to remember is that it's, it's, a, it's a negative value if it's an exothermic reaction and an endothermic reaction has a positive value. And the most important thing you've got to remember is that it's measured in kilojoules per mole. And this means that you have to work out two values if you're going to work out the enthalpy change of reaction. You've got to work out how much energy is being given out, that's the kilojoules bit, and how many moles gave out that much energy. And so you've got to make, you've got to make sure you be, you're able to calculate the number of moles um, the reaction has, has used up. So I think the best way to describe how to do this is to really get... Um, our teeth into some, some past paper questions. So here is one. So the student carried out a laboratory experiment to determine the enthalpy change when a sample of butan one oil was burned. The student found that the temperature of 175 grams of water increased by 8 degrees when 5 uh, times centimetre 3 moles of pure butan one oil was burned in air and the heat produced was used to warm the water. So here you've been told how many moles have been used so there's no need to work that out here um, but you've got to work out to work out enthalpy change, you've got to work out how much energy has been given out. And to do that, you use an equation, and that equation is Q equals mc delta T. So Q is the amount of energy given out, m is the mass of whatever you are heating, and that is sometimes something that students don't remember and they're given some different masses and they use the wrong mass, it's always the mass of the thing you're heating. So here it says the temperature of the water increase, so we're eating the water, so our mass is 175. So Q will equal 175 times the specific heat capacity, that's what C stands for, the specific heat capacity of whatever you're heating, and that is water, and that's what they're given here, the specific capacity of water is 4.18. So we're going to times that by 4.18, and then times that by delta T, which is our change in temperature. And we've been told here that the water increased it by 8 degrees, so we're going to times that by 8. And that gives us a number which is um, 5,852, and that's in joules at the moment. If we're going to convert that into kilojoules, we're going to divide by 1,000, and that gives us 5.852 kilojoules. Now, to give our enthalpy change, we've got to work out how many kilojoules are given out per mole. Now, we've given how many moles gave out this number of kilojoules of energy. So, we've, all we've got to do is divide this uh, value by the number of moles that are reacting. Um, and so, our enthalpy change will equal, which is delta H, will equal 5.852 divided by 0 0.005, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 3 which equals 1170.4. That isn't finished yet. The last thing we have to do is make it negative or positive depending on whether our reaction is endothermic or exothermic because that won't happen automatically based on our calculations. And so we've got to think about whether it's exothermic or endothermic. We're told that the temperature of the water increased and so therefore this is an exothermic reaction. Remember, exothermic reactions have a negative enthalpy change so we have to make this value negative, so you make sure you put a negative symbol in front, and then add the units, kilojoules per mole. And that's the answer to that question. A different sort of question will be where you are adding two solutions together, and you've got to work out the enthalpy change of that reaction. So here, we're adding a 25 centimetre cubed sample of 2 mole per dm cubed hydrochloric acid, and a 50 centimetre cubed sample of 1 mole per dm cubed sodium hydroxide, they're both 18 degrees to start with, but they the final temperature of them is 26.5. And you've got to work out um, the enthalpy change. Now remember, for enthalpy, enthalpy change is measured in kilojoules per mole. So first we've got to work out how many kilojoules of energy are given out, how many moles are reacting, and then divide the kilojoules bit by the moles bit. So first, work out how many 
kilojoules of energy was, given, energy was given out. So Q equals mc delta T. We've got to really work out what these numbers are here. So remember, m is the mass of whatever's heating. Now, if we add two solutions together, you've got to think about what we are taking the temperature of. And if we add those two solutions together, we're taking the temperature of the total volume of the solutions added together. And because that's where the heat is going, it's going into heat the whole solution. And so we're going to, uh, m is going to be uh, 25 added to 50. And so m is going to be 75 in this case. We're going to times that by our specific heat capacity of water because essentially most of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide is water. It's, dissolved, it's HCl gas and sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, most of it is water. So we can just take that as an assumption and our specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 as mentioned in the previous question. You'll always be given that number if you need it. And then times that by the rise in temperature, or the change in temperature, sorry. Now, it started at 18 degrees, it finished at 26.5. So here we're going to have to do a small calculation. What's the difference between those? The difference between those is 8.5. And that gives us an answer of 2,664.75. That's in joules. Remember, we want it in kilojoules, so it's 2.665 if we round up kilojoules. So we've got now our kilojoules bit of our, um, of our of our enthalpy change. Now all we need is the moles. Now to work out the moles reacting here, we've got to work out how many moles of each of these are reacting. Because if they're different, we need to take into account that one was in excess and one was not. So to work out how many moles of these we've got, we're going to have to use our moles equations. And these are solutions. So we're going to be using uh, moles equals concentration times volume. So we've got volume and concentration for each of them. So we times those together and divide by a thousand. So our first one uh, for HCl is 25 times 2 over a thousand. And that gives us 0 0.05. And for our NaO NaOH, it's going to be 50 times 1 over a thousand. And that also gives us 0 0.05. Now, because they're both the same number of moles and it's a one-to-one -one reaction, we know that 0 0.05 moles of uh, will be reacting. If one of these was higher, so say that NaOH was 0 0.08, we know that still only 0 0.05 moles of NaOH will be reacting because the rest won't react. The limiting reagent would be the one where the, with the lower number of moles, and that's the number of moles that we divide by. So to work out delta H, that's going to be 2.665 divided by 0 0.05, and that's going to give us an answer of 53.3. To three significant figures. Now remember the end bit is to remember to either make it negative or positive depending on whether it's exothermic or endothermic. This is exothermic because the temperature went up and therefore it's a negative enthalpy change and then add your units kilojoules per mole. The final thing to think about is why enthalpy changes may be inaccurate if they're measured in this way and the way the, the reason the way to think about this, sorry, is to think about the way the, the experiments are carried out. So, if you are measuring two solutions, we've done this in class, you put it in a polystyrene cup, and they take the temperature of the solutions in the polystyrene cup. If you're using a spirit burner, you use a spirit burner heating up a copper can with water. Why The question is, why are we using a polystyrene cup in a beaker? That is to reduce heat loss, but heat loss is still our enemy, and so that is what um, you will write if you're asked why the numbers are inaccurate. So heat loss is your only answer there for why these numbers might be um, less than the actual number because the heat that is given off by the reaction or by the fuel isn't completely going in to heating up the water. And so actually more energy is given out than is being measured. And so we might have a lower number than, uh, than, we, than we should have.